Saint Christosimos was a Greek Orthodox canonized saint who was killed over 100 years ago for his belief. His eyes were gouged out, his ears were cut off, and his beard was ripped out chunk by chunk until he was killed in the streets by a mob. This all happened due to the Greco-Turkish War. Uh, my family history and the research that I have done uh, makes me credible to speak about this, and if you do listen, it will make you smarter, and you will be able to uh, fully understand the tragedies that have occurred there. In order to properly inform you about the Greco-Turkish War, it's important that I first go over the ethnic conflict between Greece and Turkey, then the occupation and counterattacks that occurred, and finally the burning of Smyrna. Now that you know I'm going to inform you about the Greco-Turkish War, let's begin by talking about the ethnic conflict. The ethnic conflict between the two nations has always existed, um, the Ottomans being the Turks, which is a mostly Muslim empire, and the Greeks being a mostly Christian group of people. The Ottoman Empire did control the Greeks for over 400 years until the Greek War of Independence in 1821, uh, where Greece was uh, able to earn their freedom and become officially a nation of their own. And in the, uh, the ethnic cleansing that also occurred within the Ottoman Empire was very prevalent. Uh, anyone that was Greek or Christian was often either persecuted, um, uh, basically for their beliefs, or they were put into the lowest class of people uh, possible. Uh, but in 1918, 12 days before World War I ended, according to Kinley, who uh, wrote a book on the Greco-Turkish War and interviewed many people who um, were in the war, he said that the Ottoman Empire was to be partitioned among the Allies in the Armistice of Mudros, and Doing this, Constantinople was given to the Allies, and the city of Smyrna was given to the Greeks. Now that we have discussed the previous ethnic conflict between Greece and Turkey, let's move on to the occupation and counterattacks that occurred. Like I said, Greece was given the city of Smyrna uh, to control by the Allies, and in doing so, they wanted to... Um, reconcile what they had lost for so many hundreds of years they wanted to revive the byzantine empire because they had been downtrodden upon for so long so uh, with uh, presumed allied support according to malkoff who had done extensive research on the greco-turkish war and wrote the essay an essay in 2004 he said that with presumed allied support uh, the greeks launched an offensive toward the east toward the city of ankara but uh, at the last minute, the Allies, specifically Britain, withdrew and left uh, the Greeks alone on the battlefield to essentially be destroyed. And especially due to uh, Turkey's Mustafa Kemal Ataturk, who was a famous general, he had the tactical strategy and expertise to swarm the Greeks and essentially defeat them. And in doing this, Greece lost all control of the territories that they were given and they essentially began to spiral downward quite rapidly. Now that you understand the occupation and counterattacks that occurred, we can finally move on to the burning of Smyrna. Uh, the burning of Smyrna essentially marked the end of the war. The Turks uh, made the attack and burned the entire city to the ground. Uh, there were massacres in the streets, men, women, and children were killed. Um, it was very common for the women to be raped and children to also be killed. And in best case scenario, the men aged 21 to 45 were placed into slave labor camps in order to benefit the Turkish army. And in, uh, like I said, best case scenario, the women and children would be deported, uh, not to a different nation, but literally outside of the city limits and sent to wander the wilderness, um, to seek refuge. So the uh, Turkish denial is also a massive part of the war. They refused that they had done anything wrong. Um, they refused that they had burned the city to the ground, but it's simply not true. They, uh, it's been proven that they did do that. And according to Constantine Hatsa Dimitriou, who is the chairperson of the 
Hellenic Organization of Genocide. He spoke on the genocide of Anatolian Christians in 2012, that these Greek communities that were under attack for so long, it's not due to a natural disaster, or economic circumstance, or voluntary migration. It's a systematic policy that has been identified as Turkification, which is essentially, essentially the de-Hellenization which has been going on since the 14th century. Finally, after covering the burning of Smyrna, let's recap everything I've shared today. First, I spoke on the ethnic conflict between Greece and Turkey, then the occupation and counterattacks that occurred, and lastly, the burning of Smyrna. Now, the man in the slide, like I said before, St. Christosimos, the man I spoke of in the beginning, he is actually my great great uncle, and I take immense pride in knowing that he died for his beliefs and he never withdrew from his faith. He uh, stood strong until he was killed.